there are so many different things we know about stars. We can determine how far away a star is, how hot it is, if it's moving toward or away from us, if the star is spinning, how fast it's spinning. We can even determine the elements found in a star. Yet, stars are so far away from us. Besides our sun, the closest star to Earth is 4.24 light years away. I mean, that's really far. So how do we know so much about stars that are so far away? Well, it comes from the light that they produce. In this series of videos, we will review and discuss the properties of light, the electromagnetic spectrum, and spectra of light. Radiation is energy that can travel through space in the form of waves. The visible light that we see from the stars is an example of radiation. There are so many different types of radiation that we will discuss later in this video. Right now, I want to discuss the properties of waves. Now, in your notes, you should draw the wave that you see uh, at the bottom of your screen. All waves have specific parts that have specific names. Let's start with the peak of a wave. Science, scientists use the term crest to describe the peak of a wave. You know, just kind of like the crest of waves in the ocean. Make sure to label one or two crests on your wave that you drew. Now let's look at the lowest points of a wave. Well, scientists call those troughs. Again, make sure that you label one or two troughs on the wave that you drew. All right, so far so good. Now, what if I wanted to connect one crest to the next crest? What would I call that? Well, the distance or length of a wave from one uh, crest to the next is called the wavelength. Since wavelength measures distance, the unit for wavelength is meters. Now, what if I wanted to connect one trough to another trough? What would that be called? Well, if you guessed a wavelength, you'd be correct. I could do the same thing at the very center of this wave. Okay, if I wanted to connect this point right here to the very next point on the next wave right here, that length or that distance that I just traveled would be one wavelength. Now that we have the basics of waves, we can see how scientists have put them all together into a chart. So here are the crests, uh, wavelengths, you know, same thing, wavelengths there. Here we go. This big chart right here, this one, contains many different types of radiation with many different types of wavelengths. And we call it the electromagnetic spectrum or the EM spectrum for short. The spectrum is arranged by the different wavelengths of the different types of radiation. The wavelength of the visible light in the middle, right there, is different than the wavelength of the x-rays over towards the left-hand side of the spectrum. Now, we'll discuss the details of the spectrum in a little bit. Right now, let's see how all this stuff that we've been talking about relates to stars. Now, we see stars because of the visible light that they produce. However, stars also produce other kinds of radiation. Stars can also produce radio waves and x-rays. Well, you might be asking yourself, well, how in the world do we know that the stars produce radio and x-waves since we cannot see those types of radiation? Well, you're right, we can't see them. So we have to use special tools to see this type of radiation. Now, scientists have been able to create special telescopes that will collect the radio waves and the x-rays produced by stars. From these telescopes, we have been able to learn so much more about how star works, stars work. Radiation is also very special because it is the only type of energy that can travel through empty space. Now, sound is a type of energy that also travels in waves. Yet, if you saw the movie Gravity, you know that sound doesn't travel in space. The only reason you are hearing me right now is because the sound waves are moving on the air particles to your ear. Also, all radiation, whether it's visible light or radio waves, travels at the same speed, which is the speed of light, 300,000 kilometers per second. I mean, that's crazy fast. 
Now, just to show you how fast, the speed of sound is 343 meters per second, whereas the speed of light is 300,000 kilometers per second. That's why you always see lightning before you hear the thunder. Now, the wavelength of a wave and the frequency of a wave are very much related. The frequency of a wave is just a measurement of how many waves pass a point per second. For example, if you could sit and watch the number of x-rays that pass by you when you're getting your broken leg x-rayed and you counted five per second, well, that would be the frequency. Now, frequency is measured in something called hertz. So in the x-ray example, the x-ray frequency would be five hertz. The more energy a wave has, the shorter the wavelength. So if the waves are shorter, and they're traveling at the same speed, the speed of light, then the frequency should, well, what do you guys think? Well, if you said increase, then you're right. Okay, now that we have all the background we need, let's get back to the electromagnetic spectrum. So that's a uh, one type of wavelength. There's another type of wavelength. Which one is the shorter one or the higher frequency? Well, it should be the one on the left. To the electromagnetic spectrum, here we go.